Welcome back to the streets of Mordheim. Tonight, it's super, super chill. Before our Mordheim campaign can play its first game, I have to get some things done. I don't know if we'll get through them all tonight, but they're all to do with upgrading our table. The big issue with this table is while there's some lovely line of sight blocking obstacles, there's no like interesting ways of traversing the board. There's no low walls to sneak around, ladders to climb up, there's no bridges to cross. So we need to fix that. This is EVA foam, super flexible, comes in the form of foam mats or what you'd see in a gym. And we're going to use this to make our ruined walls. You just want to chop it up into very loose brick, sh brick shapes without them flinging everywhere. We're shooting at night today because had a bit of a busy week and finally found a moment to just chill out and make some stuff. And a project like this, making little bricks, is perfect for that. You don't even have to really think because none of these bricks need to be perfect. They just need to get made. I've been loving doing my hobby so much recently. That's why I've been making so, so, so many videos and the support has been incredible. Honestly, uh, my sleeping pattern uh, is a bit all over the place because I stayed up reading all your very nice comments one night. <laughs> so tonight, we got a bedtime. <laughs> While I chop up these bricks, maybe I should tell you about some of the stories from my Mordheim warband so far. This model, I only really briefly touched on last episode. It's based on a kit bash that I did. It's a bit beat up now, a bit chipped from use. But what's really special about this is my friend Pablo. He hand cut a lino print of a piece of art based on it. I think the piece of art is much <laughs> cooler than the model. And that's why when I can put a model in my war band that reminds me of my friends, I really like to. Even though it's very tall and it's definitely gonna get shot at from every direction and every angle, but pretty cool. The trick is to cut all these at like just random sizes. And then we're gonna try to make it all match and work. <laughs> in the end. See, I use scissors because it gives me these nice sort of jagged rocky edges. Too perfect otherwise. Now we're not gonna glue these bricks down to a base. We're just gonna glue the bricks to each other. And that way we can kind of put them wherever we want on our table. Little brick. I'm gonna say only wanna make these a couple of bricks high. It is kind of meditative, but low key. It's also kind of boring. <laughs> this is like one of those activities you do while watching a movie or listening to a podcast or anything but, a, you know, <laughs> be alone with your thoughts. <laughs> oh dear. Oh man, this looks good. All the unevenness. Oh, looks nice. Oh, we're cooking. We're cooking for sure. All right, five walls. That's like a table worth. What else was on our to-do list? Plants and carnivorous plant. This process is so easy, but I think it's the most effective way to make jungle plants that look good on a tabletop in small quantities. Just hot glue on wax paper, and when it's the perfect temperature, dip the aquarium plants into it, and hope they stay upright. And then, because I'm a very lazy painter, I mixed up a concoction of water, Mod Podge, and green paint, and I just dipped the bases in there, plants and all. We don't have very much time, so maybe I'll 3D print some bridges and ladders. I have some nice ones from Tideworld Studios, and I can do that while I'm asleep. Carnivorous plant now. Carnivorous plant. Ah, oh, hot, okay, too hot, too hot. There has to be something in here that could be a carnivorous plant. Oh. 
<laughs> oh boy. Did I just find the thing? Did I just find the thing? Look at this starfish. That could be like a little tonguey thing coming out of that. Maybe something. Dial? Mm. Octopus on the back. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from my friend's page from PMC Illustration and Lo-Fi Workshop. Both of them love making cool stuff out of animal toys. And it's very fun and very cheap. I'm kind of rushing this a bit. I should really let this cure a little bit more. It's gonna be much easier to work with, but also not everything has to be perfect when you make stuff, you know? Especially, you know, this isn't gonna get used in every game. People are just gonna get excited because there's a fun, weird model on the table and it's painted. People aren't gonna get excited because it's gonna win awards. You gotta have realistic expectations of yourself. <laughs> when I say these things, I'm just saying these things to myself, really. Oh, beauty. Look at that. The battery of my camera is nearly out. The screen that I see myself in, I can't see myself. I don't know if I'm in focus. Is, am I too dark? I don't know, but it's bedtime. So thank you very much for hanging out. See you in the morning. Good. Good. Good morning, beautiful people. These dry yet? Kind of, not really. <laughs> mm. The little jungle plants aren't quite dry yet, so we're gonna put those in the sun. Our walls though are looking bloody nice. Just a bit of yellow dry brush in one direction. Make it look like the sun is beaming down on those edges. So simple, but it makes it pop. This is like my secret ingredient for everything. Yellow green. I use it on basically everything I've ever made. Nice. A uh, slight issue, I forgot to start my printer last night. Might need to make these bridges and ladders and structures the old fashioned way. <laughs> God, I was, I was hoping to make my life a little bit easier, but that's the way it goes. When it was really hot outside, I collected all these sticks just from my front yard. Some of them are definitely covered in spiders. That spider's pretty cute. I had a little bit of difficulty making these structures from twigs because I didn't have any that were very straight at all, which I mean, ended up being kind of the charm of these pieces, but it was kind of a pain in the ass to manage them. I hate making these structures so much because they're so fiddly. So I used super glue, but super glue I was using was too thin. I didn't have any thicker super glue. So I ended up using hot glue, which kind of stuck. Uh, and then I ended up using rope to actually reinforce all the joins, which also looked aesthetic. You know, not gonna lie, I've been doing this um, for quite a while now and I have two <laughs> vaguely vertical structures. I don't know if I have the <laughs> stamina. Is this something? I don't know dude. I don't know anymore. The 3D printer's going now. I gave in. But as soon as I started the print, I found some ladders and bridge pieces that I actually made for the previous Mordheim table that I worked on. So we're gonna have plenty. And also in the bits box, these craters from Games Workshop, they came in like a big plastic bag. These were marketed for 40K, but honestly, I think they suit our table pretty well. I'm thinking though, this could be a good lizard man spawning pit. I have some leftover epoxy uh, XTC 3D. You normally use this for filling 3D prints, but honestly, I think it kind of sucks. 
FYI, the resin wasn't this obnoxious greeny yellow color when I mixed it. I added a little bit of tint to it and it's actually UV reactive, which I don't know if that will ever come in useful, but kind of cool. I have some little beads, frog eggs. I wish I could take credit for this spawning pit idea made from the 40k crater, but I actually, I think this was in a white dwarf issue once upon a time, I swear, or maybe on like the cool Games Workshop website they used to have, I don't know. Hello, it's the next day. This is cured, kind of, mostly. I actually hit the surface with a bit of frosted spray paint, which gives it this kind of murky look. Now to finish it off, we just need to flock the edges. Nice. I also painted these just quickly, but... <laughs> oh boy, okay. Can I do this one handed? Yes, yes. And kind of, kind of, kind of. No, no, I don't want it. <laughs> and gentle, gentle. Oh yeah. Beautiful. I also printed up some little crates and barrels and sacks. All right, it's getting kind of late, but we've done our plants and our low walls. The spawning pit counts as a low wall. Bridges, we got ladders, an unpainted carnivorous plant. I wanted to do some paint practice, but I don't think we can do it. Chaos hounds though. See, my friend Zane needs chaos hounds for his chaos warband. I'm gonna get him over here and he can help paint the terrain while I kibash him some hounds. This is my bits box. I took it to the UK with very good intentions. I lugged this across the world and I don't think I used it once. I also told Zane to bring super glue because I'm totally out. There's some good legs. These little stumpy fellas for legs. And also this like little chonker without a head. Yo, welcome. Work out the um, chaos hounds. Yeah. I well, guess the regular hounds, but yeah, the chaos. I thought you could either have bears. Yep. Also found Jake the dog. Oh. <laughs> Which could be quite funny. So after all that, Zane ended up picking up some Dunga miniatures from me. They're from Ramshackle Games, Curtis, who taught me molding and casting and also sells my miniatures now. I spent a couple of hours just giving everything a bit of oil wash, some extra colors, add a bit of variety and tie it into the rest of the table. I also painted up the carnivorous plant. And oh, in case you're wondering, Zane took home some goblin huts in exchange for the Dunga, he's gonna paint up for the table. And then it was time to put it all together. And oh man, it really, all these tiny little things really add up. The walls were so simple. The little platforms, super simple. And even though half the platforms ended up being 3D printed, I think that kind of tells a narrative because it's like they're from two generations or two factions. It all looks very nice together. I'm incredibly stoked. Thank you so much for watching. There was a little bit of a delay on this episode. It wasn't out as fast as I'd like, but I'm actually experiencing some technical difficulties with my batteries and my storage for my filming. And I actually lost a lot of footage. I lost a lot of time. Um, so if there's any possibility that you were thinking about supporting this channel, now is like the time to, because I basically can't afford to fix this stuff. I just have to live with it. And I will, 100%. They're gonna keep coming. These videos are gonna keep coming. It would just be lovely without the, the other bits. Okay, thank you so much. Consider subscribing. See you next episode. You're the best.